Hello everybody, how you all doing? My name is Rafael and welcome to today's video. Today we're gonna talk about healing builds and heals in general. I think a lot of people um, really misunderstand this role. I think a lot of people believe this to be a very boring playstyle and in some cases it is. However, in great legendary missions like the Mining National Zoo, if you don't have a good healer with you, you're not gonna make it most of the times unless you have four very, very experienced players. So when it comes to legendary content, I think having a good healer is very important. And I think that there is also a big misunderstanding about what makes a good healer actually good. Some people will say just get as much skill repair as possible on your build and you should be fine. That's not the case. So in this video, we will start off with me showing you the build. And then I will go over four very basic things every healer needs to understand in order to be as good as possible and help his team as much as possible. Those four things are understanding your kit, having good game awareness, prioritizing your heals, and be okay with failure because it's gonna happen. We're gonna talk about those things later in the video. For now, let's talk about the build. The build, as you can see here, it's pretty straightforward and pretty standard, I would say. We have the Scorpio, which allows us to offer to our teammates an additional 20% damage. And most importantly, in case something goes wrong and an enemy NPC is very close to us, we can use our Scorpio in order to add some status effect on him, like poison, shock, and things that are going to slow the enemy down and maybe give us a chance to survive, give our DPS players a chance to get back and save our ass. When it comes to the rest of the pieces, of course, we have four future initiative, simply because it gives us 30% repair skills, 15% skill haste, 30% skill ratio, and then the four piece bonus increases our and our allies total weapon and skill damage by 15% when at full armor. This is another nice DPS buff that we're offering to our team. When you repair, an ally, you and all allies within 5 meters of you are also repaired for 60% of that amount. In my opinion, that's not very useful when we're going with heals like the Chem Lancer and the Healing Hive, simply because all my teammates are getting healed at the same time. So I don't know if that ground control effect, that 60% has time to actually go from teammate A to teammate B, since both of them are healing at the exact same time especially with the Chem Lancer. The chest piece talent, it's called Tactical Superiority, and it increases the ground control damage bonus from 15% to 25%. So we want to have that. The backpack is our only branched piece, the Alps Summit Armament, because it offers 20% repair skills. You want to have attributes like repair skills and skill haste. And when it comes to the talent, you want to go with safeguard while at full armor increases total skill repair by 100%. This goes very nice with our playstyle that I talked about earlier where we're staying back and we're making sure that we always have max armor. That's because when we have max armor, we also have better heals. All of my roles, as you can see, is repair skills and skill haste, except this role over here, which sadly I cannot recalibrate but we're going with mostly repair skills and only one skill haste roll on the attributes on the knee pads. However, I have three skill haste gear modes of almost 12%, all of them. 12, 12, and 11.9. The last piece of the build is the BTSU gloves. The BTSU gloves allow me to get overcharge, which is going to give me two benefits. The first one is, of course, the extremely powerful heals with my Chem Lancer. And the second one is extremely high skill haste. That means that I will be able to get my healing hive back in a matter of maybe 10 seconds. I had zero charges or I had one or two charges. I destroyed my hive and then in 10 seconds, I have all my 13 charges back and ready to use. It can also work great for some of your teammates if they're having revive hives, you using the overcharge every two seconds means that they will always have a revive hive ready. Another important great aspect of the BTSU data gloves is that it gives 15% hive skill haste per skill tier. So even when we're not overcharged, my healing hive 
has pretty high skill and haste, which allows me to spend more of my attributes on repair skills. When it comes to the specialization, we're going with the survivalist. A lot of people are going to say that you should go with the technician. However, technician offers you one skill tier, which we don't really need anyways. It allows your armor kits to heal skill proxies within 10 meters. And then you get some extra damage to drone skill proxies and robotics. However, we don't care about those things. The only good thing about the technician is this perk over here, plus 10% skill healing. However, the survivalist, as you're about to see, offers us more. The first one, of course, is the 15% increased outgoing healing. Second is the incendiary grenade, which can help you with controlling crowds. We get 10% increased protection from elites, which offers us a little protection in case something goes wrong and an enemy, and an enemy gets very close to us. Our armor kits now repair over 5 seconds instead of instantly, but also apply to group members within 20 meters. So, in case, let's say, you have no chem lancer, your healing hive is on a huge cooldown, you, you have run out of everything, the, the, the last solution that you have, the last way of keeping your teammates alive is the armor kits, which, of course, are not going to be a good method of keeping people alive, but... It is the last line of defense, so to say. Now that we're done with our build, let's talk about understanding our kit. And by kit, I mean our skills and what we can bring to the whole group. So as you watch, we're playing with the Chem Lancer, the Hive, and the BDSU gloves. The Hive, even though it is a pretty strong healing build, it's not as good as the Chem Lancer. The reason for that is that in order for the healing hive to heal somebody, that somebody has to get hurt, our healing hive has to detect that, send out a charge, and that charge needs to reach our teammate before he gets shot again. So the heals are not instant in comparison with the chem lancer that actually has instant heals. As soon as you shoot your chem lancer for the next 7, 8, 10 seconds, as long as the duration of the chem lancer is, Anyone who is in that area, anyone who is in the radius of the Chem Lancer is going to be getting instantly healed as soon as he gets hit. So that's the first thing I want to talk about. The Chem Lancer has more powerful heals. It's better for, than, for an emergency situation simply because you can drop down 3-4 Chem Lancers and you're going to have an insane amount of healing for the entire group. Meanwhile, the healing hive can't do that. The healing hive, no matter how fast sends out the charges, as we said, it's not going to be able to be faster than the chem lancer. So that's the first thing, understanding your two skills and how they work. And the second thing of understanding your build, your kit, is taking advantage of your talents. For example, safeguard. Because we're running with safeguard, in order to be as efficient as possible, we always want to be behind everybody and taking as little damage as possible because we want to have safeguard up and running procced for the most part of the fight because it increases our skill repairs by 100%. That's a big boost for our skill repairs. The third thing I want to talk about and that's the last thing when it comes to understanding your kit is the BDSU data gloves and that has to do a little bit with game awareness as well. So here is where the game awareness part starts. So the BDSU data gloves, as we said, have two very powerful uses. The most important of them, in my opinion, is that when something goes extremely wrong, when your team gets flanked, when whatever might have happened has caused you to be in a very serious situation, you can use those BDSU gloves, get the overcharge, and be able to have those very strong and effective Chem Lancers that we just talked about, spam them on the ground and maintain everyone alive. The Overcharge doesn't only offer us extremely fast skill haste for our Hive to be back sooner. It also increases the radius and the effectiveness of the Chem Lancer. You being able to predict what's going to happen in the next 10-20 seconds, you being able to predict a flank, 
you being able to calculate how many charges you have left on your hive, how many chem lancers you have, how many enemies are pushing us at this very moment, and reach a conclusion which tells you if you should use that overcharge or if you should tell your team, you know what, fall back, we're running low on hills, uh, very soon I'm not going to be able to keep you all alive, is a very, very important skill for a healer to have. As you can see the gameplay in the background, my healing hive was very low, I destroyed it, I got the overcharge, we're getting pushed both from the left and from the right, we have no cover here, so I tell my team, don't worry, I have overcharge, I throw, I throw down all the chem lancers, and I'll tell them, just do DPS, don't worry about staying alive, you're not gonna die. But if I wasn't paying attention, and I haven't used the overcharge skill or the overcharge aspect of the BDSU gloves as soon as I did, we would have wiped. The next thing I want to talk about is prioritizing your heals. And what I mean by that, in a lot of situations, especially when you play with random groups and not clan mates with who you can communicate from a Discord or from in-game voice chat or whatever that might be, you're gonna have groups that run all around, they're not staying on top of each other, they're not really helping you, so to say, they're not making your life easier. At that situation, you have to say, okay, who is the most valuable guy on this group? Who is the guy that no matter what has to stay alive? That most of the times, at least in my opinion, is the best DPS guy. The guy with the highest DPS, the guy who can kill enemies the faster, is the guy that when everything goes wrong and I have to decide which of my teammates are going to die, this is the guy that stays alive. Because it's the guy who can kill everything and keep us from wiping. I can keep this guy alive and have higher chances of not wiping than, let's say, keep the two guys who don't know what they're doing. And the same, of course, applies to yourself. You, as the healer, must always be the last guy standing. If you die before that, you effectively made the situation much, much worse because now your team has no heals at all. Your healing hive, as soon as you go down, gets destroyed. Your chem lancers disappear. That means that if you go down, you leave your team, you leave your DPS players without heals, so now they cannot count on you, and it's very likely that they're gonna wipe. It's better to sacrifice one guy or even two guys in order to keep the last guy and yourself alive and manage to not wipe than to try and keep everyone alive or try and keep the guy who just ran off alive and end up dying and being the reason that you wiped. So prioritizing your heals and having a plan in your head which says which guy you're gonna keep alive in case everything goes wrong, which after the first few encounters in a legendary mission, you can pretty much tell which is the highest DPS player in the group. And that's not to say that the other players are not good or they're not good enough or anything like that. It's just like, you know, you need to know who you're gonna try to keep up because if you try to keep up everybody, you're gonna use your skills much faster, you're gonna use your heals much faster, you're gonna run out of your charges, you're gonna run out of chem lancers, and you're gonna end up wiping. If you sacrifice one guy in order to keep another alive, or if you sacrifice two guys in order to keep another alive, it's much, much easier to keep that one guy up and alive simply because you need less heals to do that. So it's very important to have a plan in your head. The last thing I want to talk about is being okay with failure. And I'm saying that because as a healer, if you played any MMO game, uh, if you played World of Warcraft, if you played any sort of that type of game, you know that the first guy that gets blamed when everything goes wrong is the healer, then the tank, and the DPS never care. As a healer, when something goes wrong, and something will go wrong at some point, and you're gonna wipe, especially random groups might start talking shit, regardless of if it was really your fault or not, they're just gonna blame you. And sometimes they might even be right. As a healer, it's very possible that sometimes you're not going to predict the situation right, you're gonna, you're gonna use your heals faster than you should, you're gonna run out of charges, you're gonna do something to fuck up, you're gonna try to save the guy who you should have left to die, 
you're gonna get yourself killed as well and you're gonna end up wiping it's gonna happen sooner or later people are going to be mad at you i'm telling you especially if you're playing with randoms and they might be toxic players are also going to die even if you did everything right even if they did everything right for example when the dps builds have 750k armor no matter how many hills you output if they get shot by a, a, a sniper, they're gonna be dead instantly. Your heals won't have time to heal them, they're dead. Doesn't matter if you have a healer or not in your team, if you get shot from a sniper, you most likely gonna die instantly. These players, because some of them are stupid, will blame you, even though it was literally impossible. It is a game design which doesn't allow you to heal them, right? They're still gonna talk shit. So if, so in case you, you're not, okay with dealing with toxic people i'm just trying to prepare you that if you play as a healer you might meet some of those people so yeah that's it pretty much guys i don't think i have any other tips understand your skills know which skills to use first depend on your hive to do most of the healing and then have your chem lancer as a backpack as a backup when everything goes wrong or when your hive is on a cooldown use the overcharge the correct way try to predict what's going to happen in, in the new feature are you are, are we gonna get rust are we gonna get pushed from two tangas do we have enough dps to kill the enemies before they get to us am i running low on hills prioritize your hills be okay with people being toxic to you sometimes thank you very much for watching i hope that you find this video helpful if you did please make sure to drop a like and subscribe for more content have a wonderful day bye bye